Hi, my name is Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. My guest today is Amy Laverock. Amy is a partner at Mercer. She's based in Vancouver, and she is the Mercer Marsh Benefits Advice and Solutions Leader. Hi, Amy. Welcome. Thanks, Tracy. Today, we're going to talk about Mercer's latest global survey. So, Amy, we just conducted the second Health on Demand survey. Can you just tell us a little bit about the survey? Sure. Yeah, we're really excited to be releasing the second edition of this research in September. Um, we surveyed about 14,000 people around the world to get their perspective as workers, as employees, about um, digital health, who they trust, the impact of the pandemic, um, mental health, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. So um, we're just digging into the results now, but we covered 13 countries, the US, of course, but also some really interesting interesting geographies in Asia, Europe, and Latin America. So um, yeah, looking forward to uh, sharing more. So one of the findings that you shared with me is that employees are feeling less cared for. How did you measure that and what does it mean? Yeah, so we um, asked people um, to what extent do they feel cared for by their employer? Because, um, you know, let's face it, who, who doesn't want to feel cared for? A and actually, um, compared to a couple of years ago, um, we, we saw a drop in the number that felt um, mostly or greatly cared for by their employer from going from 50% to 46%. And we actually saw some really um, interesting geographical differences. Um, Latin America, for example, um, it had some some concerning um, and I, I think I think devastating um, results as well. So um, another interesting finding was that um, about one in five are more likely to move employers because of the level of support um, that they had from their employer during the pandemic. Um, and so it'll be really interesting to see, um, you know, what, what happens um, post, post pandemic as, as people um, widen their options for um, employment. Wow, um, one in five, that's pretty startling. You know, there was such a tremendous show of empathy from so many employers. And I guess um, those that did that well, it will pay off or, or you know, maybe not so much if, if you kind of missed the mark on that. Um, kind of related to that, what did you learn about employees' mental health? And I'm particularly interested in the results of the U.S. versus the rest of the world. Yeah, and Tracy, I think you've really elevated the um, conversation on, on emotional well-being, so, so well done. Um, but there are a few pieces from, from Health on Demand that, that did pop out. Um, over 60% of US employees feel comfortable or somewhat comfortable discussing their mental health challenges with, with family, with friends, with, with healthcare professionals. Um, so there's actually still quite a lot of people who um, you know, face challenges with, with stigma. So it's really important to reach that group. But actually, in other regions, um, we see a much smaller number of people that, that feel comfortable. Um, so lots of employers can, can do to kind of stress the importance of this. Um, secondly, uh, about two thirds of US employees indicated they had access to mental health counseling services, um, which, which might seem low to, to some of the audience, but actually compared to the rest of the world, it's a very, very high, high number. Um, and then thirdly, while the US does report more access, um, the, the, the survey found that about a third um, of people um, in the US actually experienced depression, anxiety, or another mental health issue since the um, pandemic began. So, um, you know, the importance of, yeah, making sure there's, there's you know, high quality access um, is really, really important. Well, clearly, um, 
expanding access to mental health was one of the key priorities that we saw in our own um, US-based employer survey data, um, and in particular, access to virtual mental health services. I think that you know the access issue um, isn't really because the plan is um, keeping people from having access. It's just more um, the shortage of that type of provider. And so the virtual access, I think, has gone a long way towards expanding that. Clearly, we still have some, some work to do. Um, as I listen to you talk about this, it seems like there's a call to action for employers to perhaps revisit their overall well-being strategies and approach and and you know perhaps modernize them a bit you know so much of, of what we were doing pre-pandemic is starting to feel like it's a little bit irrelevant now and i'm just curious what do you see when you compare well-being programs in the u.s to other countries is there anything that we could learn any best practices out there that you want to share yeah I think it really comes back to just making sure you actually have substance in the programs that you offer and are really meeting um, employee needs. So um, while you know maybe it's uh, only twenty to thirty percent that say things like, "Oh, I, I I would find a you know social network platform to connect with colleagues extremely valuable." or I would find um, you know, support groups for individuals feeling lonely, isolated, or um, you know, maybe it's only 20 to 30% of people that say, oh, I really need caregiving or, or infertility um, support. Um, you know, 20 to 30% is not the average person, but um, that's the point <laughs> is that we have to design plans for everyone to, to, to really meet individual needs. And these are people that said it was extremely valuable to them. So I think those kinds of benefits should should be considered. And I think also there's just value and understanding. I may not have the need today, but maybe I'll have it in the future. Or I really, really, really care about um, the people I work with and maybe they have a more critical need. So so while I think US programs in the past have maybe been focused on, you know, like bringing down the cost of, of medical, outside the US, the investment has been much more holistic. Um, the business case has been more tied to employee value proposition, that holistic approach to emotional, social, financial, physical health. Um, and, uh, you know, I think outside of the US, um, there's some really great practices in terms of support for the extended family, um, in terms of on site or near site services that could be required by law. Or, you know, in the UK, for example, that having a, a social networking platform is, is really viewed as, as uh, hot right now. Those are some great ideas. Um, okay, one last question. Based on the survey, was the impact of the pandemic more positive or more negative for employees and their overall health? I mean, there was uh, definitely people shared a lot of negative experiences. Um, a couple of silver linings. One is that people, as many as much as 40%, actually said, I'm spending more time at home and I really value this. Um, and, and secondly, I think we have some great data to show that, that telemedicine is um, here to stay. So what you're saying, Tracy, about the importance of virtual care, again, it just opens up so much access to, to people, really exciting. Well, Amy, thank you so much for joining us and for giving that um, little quick view into the latest global survey results. I look forward to seeing all of the survey and perhaps having you back to talk more about what's going on around the globe. So thank you so much for being here and thank you everyone for joining. We'll see you next time.